Hey, I'm going to use this crazy animation playing behind me to show you how I support my glutathione. And part of the reason I want to show this is because I want to show how involved it is in pretty much our entire metabolism. Because I want to drive this point home that we kind of have to look at more than two to five nutrients or we're not going to get this whole crazy thing running. So this is actually that same thing we just looked at. Um, I've just sort of tuned it down a little bit. We're going to turn that back off because it's scary. So this is methylation. And what we're trying to do is get this green circle spinning a bunch. And then we've got a couple other things we got to do in between to keep that running properly. And that sends some energy out different ways. We create uh, what's called SAM or SAM-E. And this helps us create all types of stuff for our brain, our dopamine, serotonin, all the stuff that keeps us happy or sad, unfortunately. But balancing this stuff is how we get all of these things running properly. We just got to learn a little bit about this or else it's just going to seem overwhelming. This is pretty much like a map, like a roadmap. If you want to go to Costco or something, if, you know, we're trying to get to Costco and get happy. We just got to figure out how to get there. So this starts with protein. And if our stomach acid is low, we are not digesting our protein. So we're not even getting started with this. That's a pretty big problem. And protein then comes along and magnesium and ATP do some fancy stuff. Make that SAMe, goes out, does the dopamine, serotonin, melatonin stuff. Comes back as SAH. SAH comes down is homocysteine at this point. If we go look up homocysteine when it's high or low, it's got a lot of stuff, bad things connected to it. But this is where we start looking at things backwards. We're saying the homocysteine is the problem, but maybe it's the fact that this little junction right here is not functioning the way that it needs to. So what we'd like to do is take that homocysteine and recycle it and use the folate or folinic acid or methylfolate that we are so focused on our MTHFR gene about, but maybe our MTHFR gene is going slow because all of this stuff isn't working. Uh, so we take that folate B12, a little bit of zinc, and we recycle that homocysteine back into protein. So now we've got another little charge doohickey to start flying around this thing that now looks like a frying pan. And what we're trying to do is generate enough of this homocysteine, but then also use it. And what we've got to do uh, other than this main path is we also need to support this choline, betaine, TMG, not betaine, hydrochloric acid, and glycine. And this helps keep the SAM versus SAH ratio in check. So this can all run better and keep SAM going. Now, this is just a simplified view. This can get insane. Once we're making SAMe, there's this whole BH2, BH4 recycle thing that comes all the way back over to the folate system and needs to be recycled. Folate is sending nitric oxide over to this thing. A whole bunch of stuff going on there. But what we want to do once we're getting this system running decently is this homocysteine now uses B6 through our CBS gene. So a lot of people are saying, do I supplement B6? What do I do about a bad CBS? The CBS is this junction right here. If CBS is not working right, doesn't have the right nutrients, or doesn't have a demand on it, then the homocysteine is never going to come down here. Now, what starts happening here is as this cysteine comes down and is broken apart, substances head down these different lines. So we've got our Krebs cycle over here with B1. If that's not working right or we're not moving or for whatever reason our mitochondria aren't running properly right now, which could be from not having a demand on them, this line might be backed up. If there's missing nutrients along the way that keep mitochondria functioning, then that line's going to be red like that. Cysteine's going to have a hard time breaking down over here because there's a backlog. If we don't have molybdenum, or molybdenum isn't being broken down into what's called PAPs and being sent to our biopterin, which is where our SAMe is running, then this line is backed up. But molybdenum is a common thing that we're not getting enough of. That was a huge piece of my healing, even after years of pushing this stuff. But that's likely because I've got this system running, started using it, and then just wasn't getting enough molybdenum to keep up. So if the cysteine does make its way down here, we start generating and recycling glutathione through this. This depends on B2 and B3. B2 
two is also known as riboflavin, and B three is also known as niacin. As this is running, and we have those extra nutrients to get it around, it's also depending on and utilizing selenium. Now, this right here is a very important piece that a lot of people are overlooking, mislooking, whatever it might be. We're focused on this iron issue over here, but we're missing all of the stuff that supports that. So the nitric oxide that is partially from folate, there's other needs for enough nitric oxide, generates or is broken down to superoxides, which we need to function because that's why we're breathing oxygen. We're like using it to do stuff. It's part of life which is eventually broken down to hydrogen peroxide, this H2O2. The selenium is breaking down the hydrogen peroxide into oxygen and water while it's also activating our thyroid hormones. So about 80% of our thyroid hormone is activated right here in our liver cells. If all of this stuff is not working right, we're not able to activate our thyroid hormones. We're not able to break down hydrogen peroxide into oxygen and water and at that point, we might not be able to use copper to carry it to iron to activate it. Or our copper might be messed up because our copper, zinc, vitamin A, seroplasm situation is not functioning. So these things are all super dependent on each other. And another interesting um, aspect to that is the fact that glutathione actually helps protect and chaperone B12 into the cell. So if we're not running this properly and glutathione is not able to run, we're not able to get B12 into the cell. And now we're not running our methylation system to be able to create more of it. And that's why one of the first things I think people can benefit from is liposomal glutathione with cofactors. And that's got the B2, selenium, molybdenum, and PQQ, which is part of that um, making PAPs have the need to go into biopterin. The liposomal allows us to get the glutathione into a broken cell because once a cell is oxidized, it doesn't have enough glutathione, it can't function properly and it can't import and export nutrients and toxins and stuff. So the liposomal allows us to bypass that broken cell membrane and get the glutathione in there, which might be carrying B12 along the way and getting it fired up. When we have the other nutrients involved, like the B2, B2 selenium, molybdenum, and PQQ, then we can rule out a lot of common situations that might hold back somebody from with glutathione. So sometimes we'll take glutathione without the other ones, or we're missing a ton more nutrients and it just backfires or doesn't work. Well, that likely means that there's something in the system that's not able to function. We might be consuming it. Maybe we can't digest it. Maybe we need another nutrient in order to get that active or whatever it is. Maybe it requires sunlight. Maybe we need more sleep. Maybe our circadian rhythm is messed up from looking at the blue screens all day and not getting enough sunlight. Maybe we're stressed all the time. We're not grounding. We're still drinking fluoride or brushing our teeth with it. Like, There's so many things that can hold back this system, but understanding this core overview of it, I think, is very important and very helpful. So that gets back into the video I made about how I balance my nutrients, which is showing where if we don't have some of these cells right now, they're loaded with toxins or whatever, they just don't function. So what if somewhere along this path, there's a part that just has cells that are jammed with some type of toxicity? What is that toxicity? Is it arsenic, mercury, lead, fluoride? We have to figure out how to get that substance out of our body, and it might not be by focusing really much on this yet. This is our core engine that we have to make sure it's got, you know, fuel and all that stuff to run properly. But then we need to actually put the machine in drive and figure out how to get it moving forward. And with biochemical machines that we are, we have to figure out what that biochemical roadblock is. That's what our symptoms are right now. That's what's driving us either mad or in pain or forgetful or whatever it is. That's our body showing us that those cells don't function properly. We have to figure out what that is and go after it. This is the core thing that helps us do that. So we have to support this while going after that stuff with iodine and all the different nutrients. So really it's about learning more and more about all these nutrients and where they fit into the system and how they depend on each other and stuff. Testing our DNA, testing our nutrient levels, writing down our symptoms, thinking about them as we're driving to work. There's a bunch of different stuff we can do to slowly figure out what it is that's holding us back. 
what's our family like? Do we have the same illnesses running through our family? Is this new? Does it have to do with people that only lived in a certain house for a certain amount of time? Did it happen after moving? There's just so much, and that's why it's constantly, how do I know what nutrient to take? There is no way to tell a person that. We have to figure it out ourselves. We have to be detectives, and I don't think we'll do it without learning this system. So... Thanks for watching. Head over to my channel or uh, unpilled.tv to get an overview of where I'm at, what I'm focused on right now, and what you can do to help or give feedback or whatever it is. Is there something in here that you would have explained different or you still don't understand? Let me know in the comments below and I'll try to address that in another video.